Hi, I'm Nicole Chamberlain, and this is a video to explain some of the extended techniques used for elasticity on the flute part. Uh, I'm the composer, and I'm also a flutist, which comes in handy for these extended techniques. So we're going to start right from the top to the bottom. So the first opening measures, uh, there's a CH over uh, the first few measures. And so what you're going to do is actually pronounce instead of playing just regular flute sounds, you're gonna get chuz. So I'll say ch, ch, but I'll do it in my flute. So my flute will act as an amplifier. Ch, ch, and I'll finger the same, uh, the note that is notated on the score. So you'll get some other overtones. So, I mean, it, it works for any note. Ch, 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 ch. But I'm just gonna use C. I find it helps if I smile and show teeth to get that chus sound. And that's that's all there is to it. You might get a little lightheaded in the beginning, uh, but it, just like when you first started playing flute, but you'll you'll get over it. There's also another consonant Z A, and that's Z, Z, or Z. But you're not actually going to vocalize it, just like you didn't vocalize it with the cha. You're just still making the same mouth shape. So you'll get <laughs> so sound a little bit different than the <laughs> It's got a more of a zing to the sound. Uh, <clears throat> and that comes up quite a few times, uh, like in measure five and measure nine, and especially in measure 14, where you're doing it all the time. <laughs> It's a little different sound. Now there's another thing I like to use, uh, which most people might be more familiar with, is the pizzicato for flute. So uh, some people like to call it slap tongue as well. Uh, I am using my tongue pretty forcefully. So I'm getting that tongue behind my teeth and I'm releasing, using my tongue to release my air. So in measure six, you see that pizzicato. And again, it's the same note heads, but you're going uh, with the pitches that's the, that you're going to finger and you're going to use your flute as an amplifier and you'll hear some of the over overtones. So let's do it again at measure six. So you heard a couple of the zas that were also mixed in with the, the pizzicatos. Uh, the next thing that there, there's a lot of an elasticity because you are stretching uh, the tonal center is pitch bends. So in measure seven, you'll see the little arrows down. Uh, have normal over it, so <laughs> to clarify that you're not going to use the pizzicato, you're just going to play regular old flute again, but you're going to bend the pitches. So I'm going to have A flat, and I'm going to bend it. And I, you can do it a number of ways. You can lip down or roll in. I do both to get a really tragic uh, sound, I suppose, or just, just to really hear a difference. And I, I won't crack. And then there's a G right after it. So I'll play A flat and then G, and I'm going to bend both of them. I'm going to return back to the starting tonal center for each pitch so that I can bend down. So I'll get A flat. So, and you have a whole mixed bag of stuff, five, six, seven, you have kind of all of them, one right after another. So it's a little bit of a trick to make the transitions. But uh, if you do them one at a time and then start mixing them, it's not, it's not so bad. So I'm gonna start at the last half of measure five. <laughs> I'm gonna do it one more time because I missed the za. Uh oh. <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't the one that had to perform this. Mary Matthews premiered it for me and she did a fabulous job. Uh, so, the next thing, uh, there's another, there's also another different kind of bend that I have notated into measure 20 and 21. So I have a glissando between a B and a A-sharp quarter tone. Basically what I want you to do is take that B and bend it and then sustain the really 
sharp A sharp. So it'll just sound like this. That's it. No, no other big deal. You're just bending and, and sustaining. Uh, the another other kind of weird thing is measure 82, where you see wide vibrato pulse. So you have four quarter notes. They're all A's and they're kind of slurred. I just want you to do a really wide and gross vibrato there. So, and like when you first started learning vibrato, you kind of made it really, uh, really jagged and, and nanny goat. Uh, I suppose that's from teaching too many youngins. Uh, but it, it makes for a really cool sound because also the viola and cello are also going to do a wide vibrato and it, it, it matches fairly well. Uh, another uh, one is the jet whistle, which may be more common for people. And that occurs for the first time in measure 10. Again, for measure 5 to 10, I'm kind of showing you almost all of my tricks in, in the opening to set it up. So with a jet whistle... I'm going to play low C. I get the most effective jet whistle down there, but sometimes you'll see other notes, like there's an F sharp and some other things. So I'm going to cover the mouth hole with my lips. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a seal all the way around it. And then I'm going to blow, but I'm going to blow kind of to the, to the other wall to split my air. So I get a, a crazy sound. So I'll just play it. You have to use a lot of air and you have to push it. You really aim for that wall. You don't want to go straight down because then nothing will happen. You'll get... That's not very effective. But if you blow kind of against that wall. So my flute is still... my The whole... The embouchure or the, the hole in my flute is still pointing up to the ceiling. And that's where I get a really slicing sound. Uh, another... Uh, and the final one, which probably is everybody has done uh at, at some point if you're doing any extended techniques even if you're just fooling around when you're when you're learning how to play is flutter flutter tongue or flutter zunga so i have flz to make sure it's clear and i'm not telling you to play flute and you're confused that you've been supposed to be playing piccolo this whole time but there's no piccolo in this piece uh measure 48 flz with three flags uh cutting into the the half note so Again, I'm using that by letting my tongue just flap around, like if you could roll your R's. Some people like to growl. I have to growl when I get really low. Uh, so you do your best Chewbacca impression or uh, pretend you're gargling, gargling water. Because there are some low Ds like in Measure 39 and I have to, have to gargle those. But that's it. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Visit my website if you'd like some more pieces that use these extended techniques. Most of my flute pieces do. And let me hear about it if you perform it, because I like to know uh, what's going on. Thanks. Bye.